Like game, you you in a game? Nah, I ain't in no game. I'm in the tank. You know? Yeah. You're, you're You're not free to leave. Young and Ace has been trending for all the wrong reasons. From his main op dying on his birthday after Ace posted this ominous message, to releasing two music videos in a span of days taking responsibility for Fulio's death. And now, footage of the rapper's arrest from a few months back has gone viral. So what was Ace arrested for? Let's find out. Young in Ace arrested. You have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided to you at no cost. Young and Ace is no stranger to breaking the law. Earlier this year, he found himself in handcuffs. Although the rapper is out on bond, his latest arrest may put him behind bars for a long time and he doesn't seem the least bit bothered. So why was he arrested? April 16th, 2024 started like any other in Jacksonville Beach. However, for Ace, this night would turn into one that he would dread for the rest of his life. Around 8.30 p.m., a rented black Chevrolet Suburban was making its way through the city. Inside the vehicle, were six passengers, including Ace. The SUV was heading towards Angie's Subs, a popular local spot, when it approached a four-way intersection. Trouble started when the driver of the SUV failed to slow or stop at the intersection, which was a clear traffic violation. Unfortunately, it didn't go unnoticed by nearby police officers who decided to pull the vehicle over, initiating what seemed like a routine traffic stop. After the SUV parked, the officers approached the vehicle with caution. The driver was asked to step out and provide identification. It was quickly discovered that the driver did not have a valid license, leading to his immediate arrest. This initial violation was just the tip of the iceberg. With the driver in custody, the officers turned their attention to the remaining passengers. It was at this point that the situation began to escalate. The officers learned that both the driver and Ace were documented gang members, raising the stakes of the traffic stop. With a total of six passengers inside the SUV, the officers decided to call for backup, sensing that the situation could escalate. Soon, additional units arrived at the scene, and the search of the vehicle started. What they found inside the black Chevrolet Suburban would turn this routine stop into a major news story. The cops' instincts proved correct. During the search of the black Chevrolet Suburban, officers made a startling discovery. The cops discovered a total of seven loaded and chambered firearms. Among these, weapons was a black rifle in plain view on the floorboard, a sight that immediately caught the officers' attention. But that was just the beginning. On the second row floorboard, officers spotted a blue bag. Inside this bag, they found a Draco pistol and a black handgun, both within reach of Youngin Ace, who was seated in the back middle of the SUV. The discovery of these weapons led to the immediate detention of all the passengers, including Youngin Ace. The officers documented each firearm, noting that one of the semi-automatic guns was loaded with armor-piercing rounds, a detail that added to the severity of the situation. Ace, whose real name is Keonta Bullard, was arrested and taken to the Duval County Jail. According to the arrest report, Bullard had constructive possession of three handguns, a term used to describe a situation where an individual has access to and control over a firearm, even if it is not physically on them. Following his arrest, Ace was booked into the Duval County Jail. The gravity of the charges against him, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, loomed large. However, his legal team quickly moved to secure his release. His bond was set at $150,000, a substantial amount reflecting the seriousness of the charges. Luckily, in the state of Florida, inmates are required to pay 10% of their bond to be released. For Ace, this meant coming up with $15,000. The rapper managed to post the required bail amount and was released from jail the next day. However, his freedom came with strict conditions set by the court. He was ordered to have no contact with other gang members, a stipulation aimed at preventing further criminal activity and ensuring public safety. Additionally, he was restricted from contacting any witnesses except for his mother. The witnesses in question were most likely the passengers in the SUV at the time of his arrest. And barely two months after he secured bond, it seems the rapper may be heading back to jail, this time for murder charges as he's being connected to a gruesome murder committed in Tampa. New Tampa has been rocked by a wave of violence that has left the community reeling. In the days leading up to a shocking murder that caught nationwide attention, the peace of this suburban area had been shattered by a series of brutal crimes. The most shocking of these was the murder of Florida rapper Julio Fulio, whose death shocked the city. And now, it seems, it's getting serious as even the feds have been forced to intervene, which was confirmed in an emergency town hall meeting by the Tampa police chief. I'm working very closely with the Jacksonville Sheriff. I spoke to him today. I've spoken to the statewide prosecutor. I've spoken to our prosecutor. I've spoken to the FBI and the ATF. And everybody is working together to ensure that we can make an arrest and hold those accountable that are coming into our city and committing these violent crimes. But that's not all. The police chief dropped a bombshell that would blow the case wide open and may likely see Fulio's killers arrested. The cops were looking into rap lyrics and social media posts in their investigation. 
Absolutely. We're looking at the social media. We're working with our Jacksonville partners and getting intelligence on that. And to confirm that the feds were looking into social media posts, Tampa cops revealed that Fulio was murked after he exposed his location to his ops. Go to a safe place. But they make their mistake by getting on social media. They let folks know where they're going to. And for the biggest bombshell of them all, the cops were close to making an arrest in Fulio's case. I can guarantee you that we're going to be following up and making arrests in that case. So why should Ace be scared? Is he on the Fed's radar? Well, his social media activity, as well as his latest song, show a man that is hell-bent on letting the world know that he killed Fulio. Ace was on a self-snitching marathon even hours before Fulio was gunned down as he took to X where he posted his evil plans. That boy going the same day he came in, Ace posted. Mind you, that night, Fulio was celebrating his birthday. Coincidence or planned attack? You tell me. But Ace's self-snitching spree didn't end there. Just hours after Fulio's death was confirmed, Yungin Ace released a new song titled Do It. The timing and content of the song have left many questioning Ace's intentions and the message he is sending through this track. Let's take a closer look at the lyrics and the public reaction to this explosive release. The lyrics of Do It are undeniably provocative and explicit. Ace raps about gunning down his rivals with chilling precision, catches and do his ass. You know he finished, he raps. Flip his ass and smoke his ass. We stand on business. In another part, he raps. I don't even call him by his name. I call them his Lil Do It's. Let's do it. Bitch call his phone, say they got the low. I told them do it. These lines leave little to the imagination, painting a vivid picture of violence and retribution. The music video for Do It adds another layer to the song's menacing tone. In the video, masked men are seen shooting another man in what appears to be a motel parking lot. The imagery is stark and unsettling, mirroring the violent theme of the lyrics. While Ace doesn't mention Fulio by name, the timing of the release and the content of the song have led many to believe that it is a direct response to Fulio's murder. But Ace wasn't done snitching on himself. Barely a week after releasing Do It, he released yet another track, Game Over, where he took his self-snitching antics to a whole new level. The lyrics are diabolical and there's no doubt that Fulio is the target. Right from the start of the music video, it's clear that it's a Fulio diss as they brandish a bottle of Don Julio, which Ace takes a sip off before starting the song. While the song's intro is disrespectful enough, the lyrics are nothing short of evil. In fact, he literally explained what happened that morning Fulio was shot and killed. Five in the morning, I got a call, what is this? Dead on the floor, dead on arrival, Mr. Six, I'm steady screaming out, f the long, f the six inches, four in the car, and one of them dead. Three got hit, Ace raps. First, Fulio was killed at around five in the morning. Apart from that, he references Mr. Six, a title that Fulio often used in his lyrics. Shockingly, Ace even describes the number of people who were in the car that got shot up, which is what is in the police report. And if you have any doubt that Ace was talking about Fulio's murder, he went on to rap, bullets through this windshield can't miss him with this chopper. Well, the news was filled with Fulio's windshield riddled with bullets, so you can easily join the dots. And to top it all off, Ace revealed why he took out his main op. And the n***a went to that grave and took a picture, Ace rapped. For anyone who doesn't know, Ace lost his brother and two best friends in a shooting, and Fulio went ahead to shoot a music video for the remix to the track When I See You at the Gravesite while holding a picture of the three dead teens. If the feds are really looking out for lyrics and social media posts in this case, the Ace has given them enough evidence to lock him up for life. But the feds aren't the only ones digging up evidence. Internet detectives have been on the case and have uncovered something disturbing. Fulio may have been set up by his close friend and his ops have already started dropping like flies. Fulio murdered in cold blood. Fulio was a wanted man. To people watching the Jacksonville drill scene, he was already a dead man walking. Fulio already knew that he was the most hated rapper in Jacksonville and even revealed in interviews that he had a bounty on his head. From the outside looking in, it looks like you're the most hated. Yeah. Might, maybe might be the most hated in Florida right now. Yeah. Do you do you feel like you got money on your head? Uh, I don't heard of you rumors in the streets, but... Fulio acted as though no one was out to get him, from announcing his whereabouts days in advance on social media to updating his ops on his location on the night he was gunned down. Fulio was making mistake after mistake. On June 14th, the rapper took to Instagram where he posted a flyer announcing that he would be hosting his birthday in Tampa and even gave away the time. Right away, his fans let him know that it was a bad idea. He had even been warned on X Spaces that there were people out to get him. However, their pleas fell on deaf ears. You gonna cash out on your bitch ass one day. I'm not, I'm sort of cut. I'm scared of y'all. On June 23rd, 2024, the rapper decided to go down to Tampa to celebrate his 26th birthday. He shared his gratitude on social media, posting, God, thank you for allowing me to see another year and to celebrate another birthday. Fulio even took to Instagram, inviting friends and fans to join him for a pool party at an Airbnb in Tampa. The event was heavily promoted on social media, promising a night of fun and celebration. The pool party start the day at 5, 6 o'clock. 
you already got an address, pull up, man. You got an address, pull up. If you need the address, DM me right now. Pool party start at five, six o'clock. The party kicked off with a bang as the rapper shared moments from the party on his Instagram story, showing off the lively crowd and the festive mood. Got me drinking, cuz. I don't need drink, cuz. Appreciate everybody popping out for my birthday, you know what I'm saying? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Everybody got their shot, put their shot in the air, man. Everybody take this shit on three, man. One, two, three. However, the party was abruptly interrupted when police arrived to shut it down. The group had exceeded the maximum occupancy allowed at the Airbnb, forcing them to leave. According to Fulio's attorney, Louis Fusco, the event became too rowdy, drawing the attention of the local police. Law enforcement arrived at the scene, and due to the excessive occupancy and noise complaints, they decided to shut down the party. Fulio took to Instagram to express his frustration. He posted that the police had shut down the party and kicked him out of the Airbnb. Police shut us down and kicked us out Airbnb, he posted. Fulio and his entourage decided to continue the party elsewhere. They relocated to the Holiday Inn Tampa North on East Fowler Avenue, hoping to keep the birthday celebration alive. We came deep in my birthday, man. Everybody talking about the spell. But as the night wore on, the celebration took a deadly turn. At around 4.40 a.m., gunfire erupted outside the hotel. Two cars were shot at, and four people were hit by the bullets. Among the victims was Julio Fulio. The Tampa Police Department later confirmed that one person was killed and three others were injured in the shooting. And while Fulio made the grave mistake of giving away his location, his fans felt as though the rapper had been set up by those close to him. Attention turned to one of the girls at the party. According to some fans, she helped plan Fulio's party as well as helped set him up. Her posts from that night showed that she was with the rapper. However, one post seemed a little suspicious and seemed to give away their location. So what's up? Come to Truth 18. Julio Fulio open till 6. She posted the broad denied any involvement with the rapper's murder after she received numerous death threats from Fulio's fans. She took to her Instagram to clear her name, saying that she only posted what the rapper approved. We only shared a story post that we were approved to post by he himself for us to watch share. The post of our flyer that we were tagged in a post too that the artist himself posted. The whole night went perfect. No bad vibes, no negative energy. This was completely unexpected being how well the night went. Please stop with the fake rumors and posts which are entirely inaccurate and false, she posted. There was also speculation that Fulio had been backdoored. According to internet detectives, one of the homies who was at Fulio's party is also close to one of Ace's homeboys. This is none other than a guy called Mizzly. Fulio even posted him on the night he was killed. Got my brother with me, he done popped out for me for my birthday. Oh, he done yeah. it's yeah. lit. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Well, Misley has been spotted with one of Ace's affiliates, rapper Backstreet. In fact, just three months before the attack, the two took a vacation to Mexico together, something that baffled the internet and the comments section said it all. And now, the internet has come up with a theory that Misley gave Backstreet the drop on Fulio, who then shot him in the face. Although these are just speculations, the two are already getting death threats from Fulio's fans and maybe even affiliates. Did they really conspire to have Fulio killed? And with Fulio gone, will the gang war de-escalate? Not likely. In fact, Fulio's Instagram account left an ominous comment on Ace's diss track post. Fulio's affiliates have allegedly already caught a body. 29-year-old Darius Beals was killed just days after Fulio. Darius Beals was the big brother to one Jacksonville's most feared shooter, Lul Leakey. Lul Leakey was from a gang called 1200, which had close ties to Ace's crew, and they even shared the same ops, including Fulio. However, Leakey was shot and killed back in 2020. It seems Fulio's affiliates are digging up old wounds to avenge the rapper's death. It's only a matter of time before Ace becomes a target, and as Ace is fighting his gun charge and potential arrest for Fulio's death, let's not forget the many. Rappers already in jail under similar circumstances. Murder Rap First up is YNW Melly, who has released music with Fulio in the past. Melly is currently being held at Broward County Jail in Florida for charges so bizarre that if true could make him one of the most evil rappers ever. On the 12th of February 2019, cops arrested Melly in connection to the death of two of his friends, Anthony Williams, alias YNW Sack Chaser, and Christopher Thomas, alias YNW Juvie, were murdered on the 21st of October 2018. Aged 21 and 19 respectively, the two rappers were Melly's childhood friends 
and were among the founders of the Young Nigga World Rap Group. At first, it was reported that the two young rappers had been shot and killed in a drive-by shooting. This was reported by another member of the crew, YNW Bortland, who drove the pair to the hospital in a Jeep compass. However, after months of investigation, the cops had a different view of things. The drive-by shooting story didn't add up. There were too many inconsistencies. According to police statements, YNW Bortland told cops that he and the two victims had just wrapped a late-night studio session when a car pulled up on his driver's side and opened fire as he was pulling off the freeway. He then drove to an emergency room in the early morning hours, asking for help for his two friends in his car, claiming they had been shot in the drive-by. Detectives arrested Melly and Bortland in February 2019 and charged them with two counts of first-degree murder. According to detectives, the two staged a drive-by after killing their two friends. Melly's trial ended in a mistrial, but the prosecution requested a retrial immediately after since they believed that they can get Melly. As the case continues, Melly is also fighting another murder charge after he was named as a suspect in the shooting death of Deputy Gary Chambliss a couple of weeks after being arrested for the double murder charge. Witnesses say that Melly and Bortland were standing with a group of men who chucked a bottle at a passing car. An occupant in the vehicle fired a weapon at the group, and one of the rappers allegedly returned fire. Standing 170 yards away, Chambliss was hit with a stray bullet and died. The rapper is also not enjoying his time in jail, as reports of him being mistreated have emerged. In an Instagram post, Melly alleged a harrowing tale of ongoing mistreatment and discrimination at the hands of the Broward County Jail staff. I have been mute for years about the mistreatment, discrimination, and misuse of authority mentally and emotionally abuse. I've been suffering and in fear. Captain Archibald, Captain Hubert, Jean Baptiste, and Jenkins are just a few names of high-ranked staff that have enforced this treatment. Melly wrote in the caption of the now-deleted post, Melly isn't the only killer rapper who is having a hard time in jail. Texas rapper Tay K, who was sentenced to 55 years for murder, has also been having a hard time in jail. Bexar County, adult detention center in Texas, hasn't been kind to Tay K as he believes he's being severely mistreated. He took to X to express his frustrations where he said that he felt like a hamster and was being treated like a ferret. However, the rapper brought this on himself. On July 26, 2016, the rapper and a few of his friends conspired to rob 17-year-old Zachary Belote. The robbery did not go as planned as Belote's friend. Ethan Walker was shot and killed as the robbers attempted to flee the crime scene. Tay K admitted his role in the botched robbery in a two and a half hour interrogation. At first, the rapper denied any involvement in the home invasion. He later acknowledged that he went to the Mansfield house but did not go inside. Eventually, he admitted that he had entered the home and looked for drugs under a couch but left the house after not finding any. Since Tay K was a minor, he was placed under house arrest while awaiting certification hearings. Well, the rapper decided to cut his ankle monitor and go on the run, becoming a fugitive. When Tay K was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 55 years behind bars, he didn't take too kindly to it. The rapper took to social media to air his frustrations and accused the criminal justice system of racism. According to him, he would have received a lesser sentence if he was white. I bet if I was a little white kid, they wouldn't have gave me no 55 years for a crime I was alleged to play the most insignificant role in when I was 16. They would have rightfully argued that my mind wasn't fully developed and gave me rehabilitation and a second first chance at adulthood. Tay K even argued that one of his co-defendants, a white girl, got only 10 years of probation without even having to make a deal with prosecutors. One of my co-defendants was a white girl who was 16, just like me. They didn't certify her as an adult, but they certified me and Pimp as adults. Pimp got 30, I got 55, she ended up getting 10 years of probation without a deal. That girl at home right now. Well, Tay K will have to serve at least 27 years before being eligible for parole. Young and Ace could also face a similar lengthy sentence if found guilty in his gun charge. It will even be worse for him if he is found to have anything to do with Fulio's murder. Is he about to get hit with a RICO charge? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.